Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. A very fun movie to watch, don't get me wrong, but the major letdowns included a generic plot and huge amounts of wasted potential. And today I'll be outlining exactly what went wrong with this movie and how this fares for the next phase of the MCU. The first aspect of this film that was majorly wasted by the film creators was the character of Modok. Modok has been a long awaited character to come into the MCU. And to be fair, in this movie, he was treated like a joke. He was purely there for comedic purposes and to play as Kang's obedient, subservient lapdog. Now, what we, what I would have wanted from the character of Modok is someone who demonstrates his intellect as well as his strengths, his physical strengths. And that just wasn't here in this movie. Sure, you had a scene, the scene where Modok was chasing after Scott and Cassie, but ultimately that scene was just brought down by the unveil of his face to show that he had this uh, sort of uncanny valley sort of face. Now, I understand that Modok looks like that. He's this big, ugly head thing, but that really took away from the moment uh, in that scene about how and it was that scene was there to show how Murdoch was this really tough menacing character but then he unveils his face and the dialogue just didn't help either I'm not trashing to be let me make myself clear I am not trashing on the way Murdoch looks I think that's fine the way that the dialogue handled that was just poor in my opinion Scott made a uh, just obviously made a, fu a fun of his face he sort of represent like he didn't really shoot back at him he didn't really be this menacing character that he is in the comics. Well, nor did he demonstrate his intellect and, you know, sort of work with Kang, bounce the ideas off each other. He wasn't like that. So that was, that's the first aspect I felt was majorly wasted in this film. The second thing is, I was very surprised that no one died in this movie. If someone actually died in this movie, this movie would have basically it would have raised the stakes a lot more and it would have show, it would have developed Kang's character a hell of a lot more because right now Kang hasn't killed anyone at all. The perfect character that Kang should have killed in this movie would have been Janet Van Dyne. And here is why. Janet was the one who saved him when he initially crashed into the quantum realm. And uh, she sensed that obviously he did all these bad things. He was eliminating timelines from the the sacred timeline and it was in a way her fault that he was able to achieve that step into getting out obviously she took it she like did the enlargement thing and made it unusable the multiversal energy core but she should have died at the end and in a way of sacrificing for her faults but surprisingly no one died in this movie kang was meant to kang is meant to be this a this Kang the Conqueror, who is portrayed in this movie, he is needed to be someone who's ruthless, no moves wasted, as he was described in pre-movie uh, interviews, and someone who just doesn't care, and he will do anything to achieve his goal, which is to win. He says that in the movie, his goal is to win. And he hasn't killed anyone. You only hear about it off screen. But just saying that you've killed a load of people off screen, isn't really demonstrating to an audience how menacing of a character you are. You're just sort of saying it. You, the audience needs to be shown how menacing you are by if you kill a main character. My opinion, Janet should have died for her faults of leading Kang one step closer to exiting the quantum realm. My, this is a minor gripe I had here. In post, I mean, pre-movie interviews, this movie was described as a heist movie. And there was only a brief section of this film, like brief, maybe even 10 minutes long, where it was a heist. And it technically wasn't even a heist. Scott just went down, he shrunk down into the multiversal energy core and he had needed to shrink it down. And we had this whole thing about probability, probability uh, plane cause, plane thing. And he has this, he has a scene in it where he's duplicating himself as all the possibilities of the decisions he makes in that place and he he just it was it, this isn't a heist movie it's not like the the first movie it's not like the second movie at all so that that's just a minor gripe i have it wasn't a heist movie
Now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm being quite negative. Some positives of this movie was it was ultimately fun to watch, be it a generic plot. It was ultimately very fun to watch and I found it way more entertaining than Eternals, which this movie is getting compared to due to its low uh, Rotten Tomatoes scoring. But the acting, I have to say, was superb. Superb across the board, right? May there were some parts where the lower level characters... The lower main characters did not perform as well, but I have to I have to just call them out. Jonathan Majors as Kang, beautiful representation of how ruthless and how he's just a no moves wasted kind of guy. Scott was just his charismatic self, and he was just amazing in portraying emotion as well as funny and comedic moments. And then the third best one I would say has to be it has to be Hope. I would then Cassie. Hope, Hope, uh, I can't remember the uh, actor's name, so just forgive me. But the, the actor who played Hope was very good in just balancing out the things between the characters, the, the feed, feelings and moods. But that leads me on to my next point where I didn't feel connected to the three characters of Hope, Hank and Janet at all when they were down in the quantum realm alone those three, when they were bonding in the quantum realm, I found myself caring more about Scott and Cassie a hell of a lot more than uh, Janet, Hope and Hank. And I feel like that could have easily been avoided if you if you wanted to portray characters with, you know, developing a bond over the movie, just leave that to Scott and Cassie because Scott has this thing where he's missed so many years of Cassie's life and that he's just sort of, he's, he's come back to this teenage girl who's no one who, who he, he is not familiar with at all and he you you have them two reconnecting i found that beautiful i was more invested in their bonding but to also have the bonding between janet hank and hope i didn't feel connected to them at all first of all it was very frustrating to me as an audience member to see that janet was just keeping so many secrets so many secrets and it was just so frustrating to me that she wasn't being clear and concise with her family and that just made me feel like they should have all just stayed those three should have just stayed up there and uh cassie should have led scott down showed her what she was working on how she's doing a signal down there and then them two get sucked in and then janet has to unveil uh to them why you know this mis why it's dangerous to go down there and you know who's down there kang is down there she should have explained that in the overworld for the final fight then hope should have came in to the quantum realm and maybe hank no but hank should have commanded his ants his his civilized ants from the overworld rather than being down in the quantum realm it just made it so much uh it just just made the movie feel lackluster to me it just it bogged down the movie if i'm being honest to conclude, basically, what I'm saying is this is a fun movie. It doesn't it doesn't deserve the um, the severe backlash it's getting, the Rotten Tomatoes scores. I don't think it deserves such a low score, but I feel like there was a lot of wasted potential. And I see where some people may find this movie absolutely trash. What was overall a generic plot, they didn't um, experiment enough. They didn't raise the stakes enough with introducing the new big bad of the MCU. And there was, yeah, there was just a lot of wasted potential and I feel like they could have done a lot better. This movie was basically whole, held up by the acting performances from Jonathan Majors as Kang and Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. So that's all I have to say right now. Let me know what you guys thought of the movie down in the description below. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. I'm posting new content, you know, every once in a while. So make sure you guys check it out. Make sure you follow my Instagram and Twitter because I do post on there quite a lot. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.